it's, it's nobody sitting here, it's not me, it's, it's other people who decide that. But before we start thinking about all of these ideas and all of these strategies to succeed, what is success? Because it seems like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like for you guys it has something to do with going to London. <laughs> And how fucking sad is that? <laughs> For me, when I was a kid, I used to walk past uh, the newsagents, the shop with all the newspapers, and, and I'd see the front cover of Melody Maker, Sounds, New Musical Express, when people used to read them, and I guess I wanted to be on the cover of those magazines, and I didn't really think much past it than that. I bought a house from a guy in England and he was showing me all the rooms in the house. And he was a fireman. So we're walking around, we go up to the attic in the, in the roof and he has three guitars and a little amplifier and it's a nice little kind of room to smoke dope in, probably, but a nice little practice room. And I say, hey, is this, this your, are you a guitarist? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, sorry. Okay, well, it, look, this looks cool. Because of the pointy roof, it was like a pyramid, you know? <laughs> and then we walk downstairs and I look out the window, and there's like a trailer in, in, the, in the alleyway. Is that your trailer? It's like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay. We go downstairs and there's a van in the driveway. Is that your van? <coughs> it's like, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, hold on a minute, because I'm about to punch this guy. He was apologizing to me because I was in a band with Johnny Wooten. I was in Public Image Limited. And back in the day, in the early 80s, PIL was big. So I said to him, what, what do you do? Tell, tell me, what do you do? You have guitars in the attic? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> so well, I'm a fireman and I play in a band. Look oh, that's cool. So, uh, is that your van for the band? He's like, yeah. Sorry. But, uh, is it paid for? Do you owe any money? I was like, no, it's paid for. Our equipment's in there. I said, well, what's the trailer? Well, the PA system is in the trailer. Well, do you own the trailer? Yes. Do you own the PA system? Yes. Well, tell me about the band. Well, we play cover songs okay. in firemen's uniforms. <laughs> Look, this sounds fucking great. <laughs> and he started to, I think he grew. Like, he's like, well, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no one's gonna boo a fireman. You suck, what? You suck now playing guitar, but the rest of the time we love you. <laughs> <laughs> And he said, well, yeah, sometimes when we're not playing very well, people are still very, very nice. And they send us drinks, and there's more sex than you will believe. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm jealous of this guy. I'm like, dude, this is the holy fucking grail. <laughs> Succeeded beyond anybody's wildest <laughs> You can show up drunk, play the wrong notes, drink beer, shack somebody, get paid. <laughs> this is it. And I saw this wave just come across his face. He was just trying to succeed in somebody else's fucking plan. I did the same thing. Before that, I joined PIL 
we had a top five single all over the world called This Is Not A Love Song. The worst song we ever did, <laughs> did the best. Of course it did. <laughs> um, when we went to Japan and Australia, I had a house in Los Angeles with a swimming pool and palm trees. And for anybody from England, <laughs> never mind going to Japan or the hit single, palm trees, that is success. Right? You don't have to take a photograph and say, dear mom and dad, I've succeeded. You just have to point to a palm tree. <laughs> <laughs> But after five years in the band, I just became really unhappy. And I, it took me a year to figure it out. I was in somebody else's shitty photograph with the palm tree. It wasn't my photograph. And I, I felt earlier like you guys are trying to be in somebody else's photograph. No way. Do you know what it's like to play in London? Oh, I've got five pence for a sandwich. <laughs> When's the other band coming on? The PA doesn't work, there's no beer. It's raining. <laughs> Think it through. Think it through. <laughs> I'm just saying. So yeah, redefine success on your own terms. Think about me in LA, in a little speedo, baby. No. Uh, think about the fireman. Wait, think about the fireman. That's the t-shirt, but you do that. People would buy that shirt from you. Think about the fireman. Think, oh. Strategy. <laughs> Remember, we were going to... Strategy number one, have a fucking strategy. <laughs> have one. What's the plan? Just having a vehicle... That's not a strategy. I know agents who don't have maps have a strategy. Today is Thanksgiving in North America. I know people who have more strategies from where to sit everybody around the table. Vegetarians, mother-in-law. <laughs> they think more about that than they think about a strategy for their careers. <laughs> I would say, play the board game of Tour Smart. But I and haven't done it yet. Never take your country to war unless you're sure of the outcome. <laughs> That's a great strategy. I don't know what band that guy was in. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's a best player. Best player. <laughs> Um, but the first time I read that, I thought, ah, easy to say, very hard to do. But you have to do that, because touring, being in the music business, being in any entrepreneurial business in this world, in this economy, although it's, your economy seems okay, no? Getting well, America's fucked, England's fucked, everywhere's fucked. But you're at war. You're at war with, you shouldn't be really, but you're kind of at war with other bands, even though you need to network with them and help each other more than anything else. You're kind of, you're in competition with other bands. You're in competition with sporting events, movies, the economy, you're at war with whether America's going to war again. <laughs> I'm at war with my knees. My knees are fucked. Me too. You have to conduct yourself as if you're at war. Um, my friends in a band called the Scotland Yard Gospel Choir, they're not Scottish, they're not religious, and they're not a choir. <laughs> Sorry. 
Uh, they just blew a tire uh, changing lanes in Ohio, rolled the vehicle, all of them in hospital. One guy was taken to hospital in a helicopter. Um, so, uh, even if you are a good driver, a sober driver, it might be the guy behind you or the idiot in front of you. You're at war all the time. Oh, this is difficult. <laughs> that wasn't funny. I didn't have my hand up. <laughs> You have to stop blaming anybody for anything and take responsibility for every single thing. And here's why. I'm going to struggle with some stuff here, so help me out. Let's say you go to Sao Paulo. <laughs> To do a show and you're in a very big club you're in the wrong club it doesn't matter who you can blame you can blame your agent because you put you in the wrong club or maybe it's the right club on the wrong day you can blame your manager because you should have been working with your agent you can blame your record label if you have one, you don't need one, but if you have one, you can blame them for not sending the posters out on time. You can blame the producer of your album, because two songs in, he says, can you hear it? <laughs> no. Backpipes, tattoo. <laughs> now, you have backpipes on track two of your album. You can blame the publicist. It doesn't matter who you can blame when there are two people at your show. And I guarantee you, one of them will be the music critic from the New York Times. <laughs> what? In Sao Paulo? On a Tuesday? Yes. Fuck. That's Murphy's Law. <laughs> always punching you in the nuts. <laughs> What's nuts? What's nuts in Portuguese? Sacco. 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 I thought it would be like a testiculos. <laughs> no, that's an instrument. The testiculo is an instrument, isn't it? <laughs> that's the ball. <laughs> It, it doesn't matter who you can blame. You will be standing on stage in front of two people. Mm -hmm. And your career, your music, your plans, your ideas, it's been flushed down the toilet. And maybe the person standing next to the journalist is some really hot girl or guy that now you will never be able to shag. <laughs> <laughs> or it's some fuckhead in a kilt going, hey, fucking backpack. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The only sound you will hear <coughs> is the sound of your career <coughs> crumpling up into a ball, rolling off the front of the stage, bursting into flames, and falling into a shred. <laughs> Oh, and the other sound will be the bad monitors. <laughs> the monitor guy for that, or the tour manager. <laughs> You're going to pay all of the price. You have to take all of the responsibility and stop blaming. This is an easy business to blame people in. It's full of fucking idiots. <laughs> and the sooner you start to take control of this stuff, you're gonna find out some things. One, it isn't rocket science. It's tons and tons and tons of shit to deal with, but it's not rocket science. And you know what? It feels really good to take care of business. Did the posters go out? Did they? Yeah, I sent them out. 
you don't have to call the manager ten times. He said yes, but I think he's lying. Did they go out in the booty? <laughs> Send the fucking posters out. It's done. It feels good. You can send them out eight weeks before the show instead of eight days before the show. And you'll start to gain a knowledge of the unique, special things that are vitally important to you, your music, and your band, or your business, whatever it is. So when it is time to find a manager, an agent, a label, you don't need one, but whatever, Right? You'll be better educated as to the things that you specially need. Right? You can make better decisions. Boom. <laughs> there's, there's no magic button. It's up here. It's, it's right there. It's in you. The magic button is in you. For me, my magic button. <laughs> but for you, maybe. <laughs> oh. Free is the new black. Is everybody down with giving everything away? Are we all okay with that? <laughs> Show of hands. Yeah. Giving all your music. Hello? Giving your music away. Yes. Okay. Hands up yeah. for no. Okay. I don't think it's a problem if 20,000 people download your new, best, expensive to record album for free. It's a problem if 20,000 people don't. Now you're fucked. If they do, it's the beginning of a new and wonderful relationship. You can go to their house. <laughs> Monty Python <laughs> started giving everything away. Every, oh man, every sketch, every show, you can get it online for free. Do you know what happened to their revenue stream? Expressed as a percentage, please. A hundred percent? hundred percent what? Went up a hundred percent. A hundred? Come on. <laughs> No such thing as a wrong answer. <laughs> I want four more. 20% Actually, that is wrong. <laughs> Three more. 50% up? Okay. 500%. Up. One more. And start the same. Nothing, okay. Wow, wait a minute. <laughs> 23,000 <000%. laughs> percent. <laughs> 23,000 percent. Free is the new black. They didn't just give it away. They Monty Python the fuck out of it, right? They, they authentically marketed it. They said, hey, asshole, <laughs> you've just had all of this stuff for free. Now go and buy the DVD. And they made it very easy. Hmm? Prince. The screen is washable. If anybody wants to <laughs> the screen. That's what we do. That's what we do in North America. But if it's different here, then that's fine. <laughs> I understand niche marketing, target marketing. And Prince was one of the first guys to start to do something different. He started to give his CD away with a concert ticket. 
it's a very easy way to add twenty dollars worth of value yeah. to a concert ticket for one dollar. Smart, smart guy. But then he gave away an album to anybody who bought the Daily Mail newspaper in the UK. That's not target marketing. My mom and dad have got Prince's <laughs> new album. My dad is on oxygen. He doesn't need Prince's new album. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Thanksgiving too. I... So I, I thought, well, he's just lost it. I still love him, but he's lost it. And then I heard he sold out, I think, 22 shows at London's O2 Arena. Is that, is that, is that right? Huh? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. <laughs> 21. 21, right? So I think the conversation between Prince's tour manager and the hotel manager where he was staying in London went something like this. Hello! We need six more rooms for Prince. And the hotel manager's like, okay, stop. I think this guy Prince is a sexual predator and he can't have more rooms to bring girls and bring guys back to him. Shut up. We need six more rooms. We need somewhere to put all the fucking money <laughs> for Prince to have sex on. <laughs> I think it was, was it 26 million dollars? Right? Free is the new black. This is Mathieu Drouin, who manages a French Canadian band called uh, Magic. <laughs> this is interesting. So the stuff we give away the most sells the most. I thought it would be, we give some stuff away, and this other stuff sells. That's not what he said. The stuff we give away the most, sells the most. I just heard, is it, I don't know where I heard this. People who illegally download music the most, spend 30% more money than other people on legitimately buying music. Oh dear. Free is the new black. Yes. You have to give it away because everybody else is. Make sure you get something in return. The most valuable thing you can get in this world is the seed, the possibility of a long-term relationship. <laughs> If you can find out someone's email address and their zip code, you can, you can do so much with that. I'll get to that in a bit. Oh, my favorite. Aim low, get high. <laughs> this is another one of my sayings for me. And it also got my eldest son sent home from school wearing the t-shirt. <laughs> of course, have ambition. Shoot for the stars, right? Ah. But the problem with walking around looking up into the stars is your next step is here, right? The way to get there is by looking down there. How do you put 20,000 people in a stadium? I have no fucking clue. But you could make two friends today, or two imaginary friends over there, <laughs> or those two guys at the back. You could do that. You could make two more friends tomorrow. Make one more friend the day after that, three more the day after that. Because all 20,000 people in the stadium is, is 10,000 times meeting those two people. And that's all the music business is. That's fucking it. That's it. 
It is a shit ton of work. I was at the Great Wall of China in 2006. Business, I like this. It's a good metaphor word. And I'm standing there. Fuck! 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 And then I got hungry because there's a Kentucky Fried Chicken at the Great Wall of China. What the? That's wrong. I told that guy, this is wrong. <laughs> two, two pieces of extra crispy. <laughs> but it's one of the seven wonders of the world. And you can stand there from a distance and go, how did they do it? How? How did they do this? On the other hand, it's just a fucking pile of bricks. It's just a pile of bricks. It's a really long, amazing pile of really old bricks. <laughs> but it's just a fucking pile of bricks. Boom. So you can stand off to a distance going, or you can start your own pile of bricks. And after two weeks, well, you'll have kind of a meaningless pile of bricks. <laughs> After six months, you'll have a bit of a fucking wall going on. And people will come up to you and say, What the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? And you can say, Great Wall of China <laughs> to the sequel. <laughs> And people will say, this is crazy, you're crazy, how can I help? <laughs> because people like things that don't make any sense. People like to get involved in a crusade. When it all makes sense, it's just a business plan. Do you guys know a band called Guar? <laughs> Just you guys, or more people. I was thinking, I don't know, I'll talk to you about that later. Oh, this is good too, I like this stuff. Expand yourself as you expand your business. That's, yeah, spiritual, whatever. Nice, good. The important part is that last line, accumulate diverse skills. I go to lots of places, they're like music schools, and people are very single-minded, trying to be the very best bass player, the very best guitarist. There already is one. And the time and effort you spend trying to be that little bit better. Maybe you could spend that energy diversifying your skill set. I want a bass player in my band that's pretty good, but can fix the van. <laughs> and get on the internet. Right? It's no good. Flea uh, from the Red Hot Chili Peppers played bass in my band, Big Face. He's fucking unbelievable. But it's no good, me and Flea. Side of the road. Well, Flea. <laughs> here we are. Look out, London. Here we, here we come. Did, can you... Can you fix her? Can you fix her then? No! Well, you suck! It doesn't, it doesn't matter, does it? I met an engineer, a recording engineer, in Indianapolis, Indianapolis, Indiana, okay? Um, he's a good engineer. He applied for a job at a recording studio 
three other engineers applied for the job, but he got the job. I'll give you $20 if you can tell me the skill he had that got him the job. You make good coffee. <laughs> good answer. It's not the $20 answer. Você fala com ela, pergunta se ela conseguiu falar com o Gerson, confirma o show. Aquarium maintenance. Taking care of the fish tank. Ela, elas têm que definir se eles podem nas sábado no tempo do centro comunitário ou domingo no, no teatro de aranha. Are we okay? Quarry? Yeah. Because most studios will have a fish tank in the reception. I have lava lamps because they're very relaxing. And a fish tank is very relaxing. Unless it's full of dead, rotting, stinking, maggot ridden fish. In which case it's a bit of a bummer. Aí ela ficou de falar com ele, ele tá viajando. That's how he got the job. Então pressionar a emoção é só perguntar se ela conseguiu falar com ele. So, I tell that story in Norway. John Fryer, who produced the first Nine Inch Nails album, very good engineer, very good producer. He became one of the busiest engineers in New York City because of one extra skill. He had a little bit of Japanese. All these bands were coming over from Japan. People were like, fuck, John Fryer. He can deal with this because he, he can't debate in Japanese. He just has a few essential phrases you need for a recording session. Uh, excuse me, uh, I think your guitar is out of tune. Uh, excuse me, is it okay if I punch your guitarist? Uh, excuse me, hold my jacket. This guy's going to the emergency room. Just the essential phrases you need. <laughs> you want to work with the Rolling Stones? Then spend some time working with the elderly, the incontinent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny, but it's true, isn't it? <laughs> You don't approach their management and say, <clears throat> I think I'm the right person for the job because I can, I can deal with the mixed problem. Put it, put it on page six. And you, when you get to page six, aquarium management, a little bit of Japanese, dealing with the elderly and the incontinent, you can say, that's a mistake. I don't need that skill dealing with the Rolling Stones. Yes, I do. And the manager can say, no, you don't need that skill. Yes, you do. You've got the job, man. <laughs> this will be fun. Who is the better guitar technician? I talk, I've been talking about this for two years, right? All over Germany, England, Norway, China, and all over America and, and little bits of Canada. I've been asking this question. And finally, I'm here and I can ask you, who makes the better guitar tech for a metal band coming to South America? The amazing, unbelievable guitar tech. You know, the guitar techs who are almost like legends themselves. They have their own little area. Christmas tree lights and incense. <laughs> Fantastic. Mixing margaritas. <laughs> is he the best guitar tech for the metal band in South America? Or is it the one who can say, Por favor, oh, I'm Pinfiquidor, that guitar precisa de valvus dobas. <laughs> Does that mean what it's supposed to mean? <laughs> because the amazing guitar tech who doesn't speak Portuguese, what can he do? He can use the universal uh, symbol for guitarist. <laughs> 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 guitar, 
and we're monetizing the space around the thing we used to sell. I think the thing we were always selling in the first place was fine, but let's pretend it was a CD. <laughs> Create another album. I've seen a few people recently who have spent a very long time on their first album. Fucking finish it. Do it. Do a live album. Do an acoustic album by the side of the lake. Fire your guitarist and record all of the phone messages. <laughs> then hire him back and then fire him again and record all those messages. Release that! Release it! And then he'll show up to your gigs with a, with a t-shirt that says, I was, I, all of my machine messages were recorded by the band and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Steal the t-shirt design from him. <laughs> Do a cover album. Uh, we were talking yesterday about the what side of it, sharp side of the moon. Also, find a note that resonates with people. And strike that note, resonate with people, and then you can take them on a journey. There might be a little bit of compromise at the beginning. Have more than one t-shirt. The question cannot be, <coughs> would you like to buy a t-shirt? And which t-shirt t-shirt do you want to buy? The question has to be, Blocking the exit. <laughs> Which one of these shirts are you going to buy now? <laughs> it's a very different question. It doesn't matter if you're only going to do one show next year or three shows, but if you're serious about moving forward and start gigging, you know how many events I do a day sometimes? Or four events a day? If you just sell five more shirts at a show, three shows, who cares? 100 shows, that's 500 more shirts. It's not about the money, it's 500 more people who are wearing your shirt. It's 50 people who wake up the next day and go, I have no fucking clue who that bag was, or I loved them. Hold on a minute, let me wipe the puke off this shirt. <laughs> oh, fucking love them. <laughs> Now I better wash the shirt. And they wash the shirt and fold it. They're making another connection with your band. And when you find somebody who has the live album, the acoustic album, the compilation CD of the lead guitarist and phone messages, uh, the fake German tour album. <laughs> That's easy. Just go down and just grab a microphone, record an album, throw a typewriter down the stairs, and I guarantee you any words that are printed on the paper, those are cities in Germany. <laughs> it's show business. That's not really a lie. Yeah, inventor. <laughs> but when you find that person that has all of those things, then you ask them, do you have the recipe book? Ah, because when we made the album, we used to cook dinner for each other. And I can never listen to track two without smelling in my heart fresh basil. <laughs> and if you don't have the recipe book, I feel like you don't have the soul of the album. It's $50. Thank you. <laughs> or, Give them the recipe book and insert some hard to find ingredients. Salt, sugar, olive oil, yeah, red wine, yeah, saffron, what? Saffron? Where the fuck are we going to get saffron? I think I saw some on the band's website. How much do we need? Four kilos. <laughs> Make 3D decisions. Dave, 
Those are my boys. Sorry. Oh. Make data-driven decisions, right? I don't think you heard me say earlier, a business plan is just a business plan. I think you need to understand some of the basics of the business you're involved in, some basics of a spreadsheet, some basics of accounting, whatever, before you set fire to that shit. You need to understand it. You also need, I think, to make smart decisions everywhere but the music and on stage. Right? You can't smart those decisions. And if you fuck up all the other decisions, you won't be able to make the right or the wrong decisions on stage or with the music. Here's a map of the 100 largest cities in North America. Hopefully this will translate. 100 largest cities in America, North America. No. I wondered what would happen if we drew a line if we drew a line from Minneapolis down to Texas and how many of these 100 largest most important cities will be west of that line well it turns out there's only 14 or 15 west of that line. This is 1,000 miles. This is 2,000 miles. So for a band from Chicago, traveling to Denver, to Salt Lake City, Utah, to Las Vegas, Nevada, and then to Los Angeles, You've got a 1,200 mile drive, followed by an 800 mile drive, followed by a 700 mile drive. Or, expressed differently, exploding transmission. <laughs> exploding bass player's head. I can't fucking do <laughs> <laughs> Exploding bass player's underpants <laughs> from the dubious microwave burrito you bought from the truck stop just got <laughs> 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 East of that line. It's a smallpox epidemic of opportunity. You can skateboard between some of these cities. There are great tips in my book, like how to get a better sound, uh, how to be a better opening band. It doesn't matter if you're late. You're way more likely to be late west of that line. East of that line, you can arrive at the city early. If you're in the wrong venue, you can walk around town and find the right venue for next time. If you haven't sold many tickets, you can go to a Starbucks, a clothing <laughs> store, a tattoo.